Ooh, oh, don't you hate it when that happens, when something crashed? Well, I hate it whenever my app crashes, but luckily now we can get all the details, all the stack traces from our crashed apps with App Center Diagnostics. Let's go check it out, what it's all about. Before we dive straight into the code, there is first some initial setup that we need to do in the App Center portal. So navigate over to appcenter.ms, um, create an account if you haven't done so already, and you will land here in this portal where you can start creating app definitions. Now, there is something a little bit weird. Um, so let's just click this add new app and you will see um, there we can specify the OS and we can specify the platform. So this means if you follow along this path that you will have to create multiple app definitions in App Center for or multiple platforms, uh, which can be a bit weird. Um, also, you know, I kind of like it to have the separated data for Android and iOS and all the other platforms that I support. Um, but you know, some people like to have it all combined in one data source. You can export all the data to Azure uh, as well. So you will have a longer data retention and you can also mix all the data together and do queries on it, which is very cool. Um, so, you know, there's always that, but in App Center, you have to specify multiple apps for all the different platforms platform. So just to get that out of the way straight off the bat, um, here the app name, let's call this crash sample. And I'm going to specify the OS um, iOS for this case and the platform you can see, you can also do this for all kinds of native platforms, Objective-C, React Native, um, Cordova, Xamarin, Unity, of course, we're going to choose for Xamarin, but you can do this for all kinds of platforms, which is really cool. This is not specific to Xamarin. Now let's click add new app and you will land here on this landing page, which will help you get started basically. And on the left, you can see all the services of App Center that are supported. So you can also do build, test, distribute. Um, diagnostics is actually how this service is called for the crashes. Um, and you can do the analytics. I've got another video on that. It should pop up on your screen right now, or you can find it down below in the video description. I highly recommend that you watch that one as well. Um, you can use this all together. So that is what makes this really powerful. Or you can just pick um, whatever you want to use from this and um, use other services for other things that you might like. Um, but in this case, we're going to go with the diagnostics. Let's check out what's here in the overview. Um, I'm going to use Xamarin form. So let's click that tab. Um, and then what you're telling us to do is install the NuGet packages with step one, start the SDK. Um, and basically that's it. Then explore the data and use additional services. So that's basically it. I will show you everything that there is to it. Um, now this kind of getting started step will um, enable analytics and crashes together. I'm going to focus on crashes for this one. The analytics is over on the other video, but if you want to enable more services, this is kind of how to way to do it. Um, so you can just say type off analytics and type off crashes, which will enable both of these services, or you can just have one and it will enable only that one. Um, so actually, let me just copy this text right here. And we're going to go over to um, Visual Studio and actually implement this and see if we can create our first crashes. Bazinga. Okay, here we are in Visual Studio for Mac 2019. On the left, you can see a file new Xamarin Forms application, which is running on the right on the iOS simulator. Of course, this also works on Android and all the other platforms that we've seen. Um, but I'm going to show you this on iOS and the workings of the other platforms is exactly the same as this one. Um, so first, let's start off by installing the NuGet packages that are um, required for the solution. So let's go over to our solution explorer, right click on the um, solution level because we need to install this package on all the platform projects that are in here. Um, click Manage NuGet Packages and in this next screen, we're going to search for App Center, which will give us a lot of packages. Um, so we have the App Center common package, the crashes, the analytics, the distribute. Um, don't use the push. The push notifications are deprecated by now. You can see the version number is also older, so don't use that one anymore. Um, in this case, we're going to do the crashes and that will automatically bring in this App Center common package. So let's just add that. Like I said, we have to do this on all the platforms. So Android, iOS, because it hooks into the platform specific stuff right here, um, that will detect whenever a crash happened, um, that is an unhandled, so an unhandled exception, and it will send out a report quickly before the application crashes. So it needs to hook into the platform specific stuff here. Um, so let's click OK, and it will install these packages, we need to um, review the license, I already did that, and we need to accept it right here. So let's do that. Um, and then we can start initializing the SDK. So for that, let's go over to what well, 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 we need to first update our title right here. Almost forgot. Let's update the title. Um, so crash oops, app center crash sample. 
save and with the power of hot reload you can see it automatically updates on the right with our running application uh, which is really cool this also works on android of course also on physical devices um, so this makes your development loop so much shorter and thus you can develop so much faster which is really awesome okay so over to our solution explorer let's go into our shared project right here and into our app xaml.cs um, and in here we are going to have to add using microsoft.appcenter.com I think it's just App Center actually. So let's start with that one. And here in the on start, so this is the lifecycle event for whenever your application is starting. We're going to paste the code that we've just seen. Here you can see it picks up on the App Center because of the using here. Um, and it didn't pick up on the crashes one here. Let me remove the analytics because we're not going to use that. So we're just gonna have the crashes right here and let IntelliSense fix that for us, which is going to bring in using Microsoft App Center crashes. Um, and now we have this enabled. Now, one thing that I didn't mention is uh, if you also want to use UWP and Android, which are right here, um, then you have to create those app definitions in App Center. You will just get the ID and you can just paste them here instead of these curly bracket things here. Um, and you can have all the IDs here in at once. Um, and you can just do this initial initialization in the shared code and it will work for iOS, UWP and Android. So that is pretty amazing, pretty easy. Now we've got the crashes set up here and this is actually everything that you need to do to just get your unhandled exception. So whenever something happens now in your application that you didn't see coming, um, so an exception happened, your app crashes, maybe what you hear a lot is when people um, release their app to the app store and it crashes for whatever reason and people don't know why because you know it only happens in the app store. Um, now you will get the crash reports in App Center whenever that happens and you will have some indication of what is going on. So that is already something that you're getting for free just by adding this initialization code. But wait, there's more. So let's go over to our main page right here. And um, actually, actually, let's go over to our main page example.cs first. So let's go into our main page example.cs. Here we go in our constructor. And because it crashes, so crashes, um, let's bring in the, the right using here again. Um, with using Microsoft App Center crashes. Also has a test. Uh, generate test crash method. Here you go. Generates a crash for testing purposes. How cool is that? Have you ever written a method that crashes on purpose? Um, so let's just bring that in here and actually stop and restart the application for a little bit. And we should see a crash automatically, instantaneously um, because of this method. And this is just a crash uh, test that will be sent over to the App Center portal. Here you go. Um, test crash exception generated by SDK. So that is our first crash that's going to the App Center and we should see that in a little bit whenever we go inspect the results. Um, so let me just stop this one and actually remove this for now. So that is um, um, how you can actually test your application, see if something happens. Maybe you want to build in a little Easter egg if you tap 50 times on something that it will generate it. So just so you know that everything works. Now let's go over to our main page.xaml and we're going to remove all these labels right here and we're just going to add this button who typically do something inside of your application um, so let's add a test crash me and let's add a clicked handler that is going to generate for us and close the button um, so okay we got a button set up that can um, do something it will have to test crash me um, so this is this button imagine that this is a button in your application um, of course like this service also works from your your MVVM so from your view model or whatever I'm showing it in the code behind but you you can call this service from wherever, right? Um, so in this button, your button is doing something and we can just say try. Um, so try and actually let, let's bring in here the crashes dot um, generate test crash. Um, just so we don't have to throw our own uh, new uh, exception. Um, and here we're going to catch exception X. And what you can do here is say crashes dot track error. So we can also manually kind of track errors for like your handled exceptions. If you still want to get the details, if you want to see like how many times a certain exception is happening, um, then you can track this error. So we can just put the exception in here and it will track that exception for us without crashing our whole application. So that is pretty cool as well. I'm not gonna run this time. I'm sure you'll believe me uh, because what's next is even going to be more cooler because maybe your exception 
only happens whenever there is a certain scenario going on in your application and you need to figure out what that certain scenario is. So you can add properties to this crash. Um, so if you've watched the other video on the analytics, which you actually should do, you know that you can send properties when, um, whenever you track some of these analytics, you can use those same properties, which is just a string string key value pair. Um, you can use that with these crashes as well. So what we can do here is just say new dictionary string string, and we can start adding here new, um, new keys and values. So just like this. So I don't know, let's say, uh, maybe you want to know if a user is, is subscribed or not, maybe you want to, um, you know, subscribe to a YouTube channel. And whenever someone is not subscribed, it's going to throw this exception because you should be subscribed to this channel. Um, so is subscribed, and you can just say yes, it's, it's true. Um, and then whenever that happens, so now we'll get the all the exception details. So with the stack trace and whatnot, but we can also see if this user is subscribed, yes or no. Now the same thing as with analytics, um, I warned there as well, don't go sending like all kinds of crazy details which, you know, endanger the privacy of your user, because that's not something that you want to do. So stay clear of all the personal identifiable information, uh, the PII, that's not something that you want to do. Um, just, you know, the bare minimum that you actually want to send here. Um, actually, it, it might be a good time to point out that there is a lot of more options in these APIs, because if we look at this crashes dot here, um, you can see that there is events. So we have events to um, detect if it failed to send the error report, or if it's actually sending the error report, or if it actually sent the error report. So there's a couple of events that you can uh, hook into as well. Um, um, so you can see if um, uh, 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 there was a last session, uh, if there was a crash report in the last session. So maybe it didn't get to send it out, or you want to detect like, hey, the application crashed, um, and you want to notify the user like, hey, it seems the uh, application has crashed, maybe you want to do something about it. Um, um, has crashed in last session. Oh, that's actually, you know, this is the Boolean that will tell you this will actually get you the crash report details. Um, hash receive memory warning. Um, you can enable and disable these crashes uh, sending through information as well. So again, um, you might want to give your user the opportunity to opt out or opt into this just so you know, they have full control over what is happening here. And by just toggling this, all the crashes um, um, can still be in here, but they will figure out automatically themselves if they have to actually do something yes or no. Um, and this is really cool as well. You can notify um, um, the user confirmation. So I think there is also here a kind of delegate um, should await user confirmation, which is really cool, um, which is a callback. Um, and you can ask the user for confirmation first, um, which is not something that is built in, it will not pop a dialogue for you. That's something that you need to do. Um, but this way you can ask the user for confirmation first, like, hey, do you want to send this crash report? Yes or no? Do you always want to send crash reports? Or um, do you just don't want to allow sending crash reports, which is uh, a nice option to have this way. If you want to know more on how to do that, please let me know down in the comments, and I'll make sure to um, add that to a video as well. So that's all things that you could do here with this API. Now, and one other really cool thing before we go inspect actually, let me just run this puppy so that you can see um, whenever we click this button that it won't crash our application, but it will still send down this crash. Um, and then there's one thing that I want to point out to you. So let me just click this crash me, crash me, crash me, crash me, it crashes all the time. Oh, no, my application is not great. Uh, so it's sending all this this data over to App Center right now. But one thing that is really cool about this track error is that you can also send attachments. And if we type a comma here, you can see that we can also add attachments. So error attachment logs. Um, and I think whenever we do that, let's see the error attachment log dot, here we go, we can say attachment with binary or attachment with text, um, which is really cool. I have a video on creating screenshots programmatically. So again, you will have to get consent from the user because you can't just go out and screenshot their screen with all kinds of sensitive data on it. But you can take a screenshot programmatically, check out the video that's popping up right now or down in the video description, get that screenshot.
screenshot and attach it with a binary and you can send that screenshot together with this um, error report and it will show up in App Center. Or, you know, you can pack the locks that you might have um, in your application as well. Get that from the device file system, bundle that into something and send that over with some extra locks as well. Um, so that is kind of all the options that you have to send things over to App Center. Now, I think it's about time to go over to App Center and have a look at what the data looks like when it's gathered in the portal. Back in the App Center portal, you can see this is exactly where we left it off. I even copied the code right here. Um, so let's go here on the left to the Diagnostics tab. Here we are. We already got some data in here. Um, and one thing that is very important is um, unsymbolicated crashes. Now, if you lo start looking into crashes, then you have unsymbolicated and symbolicated crashes. Whenever you create a new release of your app, make sure to get the symbol files. Um, go Google that or do it with Bing. Um, and you can get the symbol files and you can upload those to App Center as well. And what that does is will it will tell you a little bit more about the method names and that kind of stuff because else it will just be um, kind of computer generated, hard to read stack traces. Um, and when you add the symbol file, it will know like even which lines to look for in your um, code. So it will tell you exactly like the stack trace when you see when you're debugging, it will look more like that. Like, hey, something is happening on line X and you have to go there and, and see what's going on. Um, else the stack traces might be a little bit hard to read, but it can still be very valuable. So that's what it's telling me here. Um, and you can see some, some overview things here, crashes in total. So the crashes is kind of like the hard crashes, the unhandled exceptions. We didn't get any of that, um, but if we, have the errors right here, then you can see we have a nine in total. So there is a lot going on here, probably because I mashed that button for a couple of times. And it's here grouped um, here down at the bottom, it's grouped by kind of like the the, the exception message. Um, so you can see how many times a exception is, is happening. And you can see um, whatever is happening here for how many users and in which version of your app. Um, and you can drill down in that. So if we click that, you can see that we can go in here and you can um, also see like, hey, um, this is coming from this is kind of the stack trace so um, it happened on the main page button clicked and it even tells me the line from from right here as well um, and here you will have another overview for this specific exception like hey this happened nine times in the last 30 days um, a hundred percent of my users are affected so this is probably a crash that I need to look into and you can also see that um, the device that is most affected is the simulator in my case running 14.5 so you can get all these kinds of information from the the OS version and which device it's running on. So because a crash can be very specific to a certain device as well, right? Um, here you can drill into the reports as well. So this is kind of like the individual reports of the users um, in which you can go then into as well. And here you can see the error properties. You can see the is subscribed is true. And the attachments, if I would have any, then you can see them here as well. So you will get all this information. You can pack as much information as you want in here. Um, and you can drill down into that and, and see everything everything that's going on here. Now, again, you can export all this data to Azure where it's a little bit more easy to query uh, through it. So you can make your own reports and more visualizations. Um, but this, you know, gets the job done. Um, I, I haven't even mentioned this, but this service is free. You can just use it for free. Um, so, you know, there's no costs. Um, you can just go out and uh, start doing this. The retention, I think the standard retention for the data is 90 days. Um, so that's something that you want to look into. But if you're exporting it to Azure, it will cost a little bit of money. Uh, but you can get that longer retention. And this is kind of everything that will get you started with App Center Diagnostics or the crash handling. Maybe handling these crashes is not something that you initially thought about when um, designing your app, but it can be so powerful because, you know, debugging locally is easy, but debugging with a user is very hard. I've worked in companies where, you know, we were creating an app and we had these users and you would, if even if you could get in touch with them, uh, what they will say is like, yeah, I do this and the app crashes. I press this button and it crashes. But, you know, that's not enough information for us. We need more. We need those stack traces. We need to know which line actually something crashes and then we can um, figure out what to do with it, fix that bug and make our users happy again. With this App Center Diagnostics, that is exactly what you can do. Um, and it's the, the API is so simple to integrate in your application, even afterward, to just identify the paths, um, add try catches, um, and it will do, it will wire up automatically for all your unhandled exceptions. So, and all for free, all for free. What's not to like? So let me know down in the comments below if you already knew about App Center, if you're already using it, um, 
Um, again, check out the analytics video I have on App Center as well. Maybe if you're watching this sometime in the future, I already made more videos on App Center, so be sure to check out my channel um, to see if you can find anything more. Other than that, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. I hope I say this enough that I really appreciate you watching all of this and being on this journey on my YouTube channel, um, all of us together. Please like this video if you've actually liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already so that it's easier for you to discover new content that I'm putting out there, um, which I hope you'll like. And um, other than that, I'll hope I'll see you for my next video. Keep coding.